All right, so we've covered quite a few architectural concepts in this course already, and the final one we're going to talk about is how to organize the code in your projects in a way that best suits your overall developer and organizational structure. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to just be using our code from the ending state of when we talked about code splitting, and I'm not really going to be using any of the actual files in it. I'm just going to be using the directory structure to demonstrate a few things. So we're going to talk about function versus feature-based organization in a project. And this is a very important distinction to make. So let's talk about function-based organization first, all right? In function-based organization, let's just imagine that we're building a blog application or something like that. In function-based organization, you have your highest level folders in your source directory based around the functions they provide. So you'll probably have a pages directory as we have here. You may also have a network directory. You might have a util directory for utility functions. And you might also have directories for things like hooks and... If you're using Redux, you might have reducers. So anyway, the point here is that the top level folders in your source directory are based around the functions that those things provide. Now, for some reason, this is the default way of organizing code in most developers' projects. And while it works on a smaller scale, as we move into larger and larger apps, we generally want to move toward feature-based organization. All right, so if this is function-based organization, where we have hooks, network pages, reducers, util, organized around functions, basically. Let's delete all of these, except for pages, of course, to get a clean start. So if we're going to organize our code around features instead of functions, the top-level items in our source directory would be things more like articles, right? You might have signups. You might have subscriptions. You might have, I don't know, competitions, right? Basically, you would be organizing the top level folders based on what your users would describe as features of your application and not what programmers would normally think of as functions. So the reason that feature-based organization works better, and by the way, each of these folders would usually have all of the corresponding functions inside of it. So in articles, you'd have reducers, components, actions, network, util, etc. And the reason that this works better than function-based organization as you get to larger applications is when you have multiple programmers working on the same code base, they're usually going to be working on it in terms of features instead of in terms of functions. So Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. It's definitely something for you to look into and experiment with. All right, the other topic that we're going to talk about with regards to organizing your code in a project is monoliths, multi-repos, and monorepos. Now, some of you may have never heard of any of these terms. Some of you may have heard of several of them. Let's take a look at the definitions of each of these. First of all, monoliths are projects where all of the source code for that project is in the same directory, the same code base. And these projects generally have to be modified and deployed all at once. In other words, if you have 100 developers making changes to it, you have to keep that in mind because you're going to need to incorporate all of those changes into the next release. Now, if you've never heard of the other two possibilities here, you've probably been working with monoliths for most of your career. So multi-repos are sort of the opposite of monoliths. In a multi-repo, the project's source code is kept separate into multiple code bases, and all of these code bases can be worked on and deployed independent of one another. You may have heard this talked about in the context of microservices before. Now, monorepos are sort of a mix of monoliths and multi-repos. They basically take the best attributes from either side and combine it. In a monorepo, all of your code is in the same code base, but it's organized so that each piece is independent of the other pieces, right? So in other words, you have the ease of use of monoliths, right? You can just clone and run your project. 
but you also have the ease of deployment that multi-repos provide. So those are the basic definitions of the three. Let's take a look at the benefits and drawbacks of each. So for monoliths, monoliths are simple at first. That's why the majority of the time, developers will start off by creating a monolith. It's just usually how it happens. Now, the thing about monoliths, as many of us have found, is that they can become unmanageable if you're not careful. And often, even if you are careful, they still become unmanageable. Now, the reason for this is that monoliths generally work very well with small teams working on projects that are shorter term. So if you're working with two other people and you're trying to create a project that's only going to last about three to six months or is just a fun prototype, you're probably going to want to stick with monoliths. That's fine. So multi-repos, on the other hand, they do add some overhead for basic setup. You're not going to get your app up and running in a matter of an hour or two, probably. And multi-repos also contain the possibility that they'll make the deployment process more complex. Now, this may or may not be true. In some cases, they can actually make the deployment process much easier since you don't have to deploy all of your new code at the same time. You can just pick versions of each different feature of your application and deploy those together. And this is what's referred to as independent versioning of different parts, right? So you can have version one of the home page, you can have version three of the products page, you can have version two of the checkout flow, etc. Now, multi-repos generally work better in companies that have a lot of fairly isolated teams, right? Where the teams don't really talk to each other that much. They talk a lot amongst themselves, but there's not a whole lot of communication. In that case, multi-repos can be quite nice because the teams don't have to sync up their schedules in order to release at the exact same time every week or every two weeks or however long. So let's talk about monorepos next. Monorepos, as I mentioned before, include many of the benefits from both of the extremes, monoliths and multi-repos. Now, a key thing to know about monorepos, too, is that they're used by many large tech companies, including Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, and many others. So it's pretty clear that monorepos have some pretty nice benefits.